What is up, everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Resident Evil Remake Remastered. The original Resident Evil came out for the PS1 way back in 1996. It was created by Shinji Mikami at Capcom. It was later remade from the ground up in 2002 for the GameCube. This version of the game that we're going to be playing today was just released for current-gen systems, last-gen, and I think PC, and it is a remastered version of Remake. Only with Capcom can you get some shit like that. This playthrough, though, should be pretty interesting, because I know a lot about Resident Evil and the history of it and major plot points, but moment-to-moment -moment stuff in RE1... Not so much, because when I played this, uh, when it came out, I was like seven, and I didn't finish it, and I never have. And I don't remember much of what I did play, because when I was a kid, I, I didn't really appreciate Resident Evil. I somehow just never went back to the older games after I fell in love with 4 when that came out in like 2005, I think. I was always more of a Silent Hill kid. Resident Evil. I didn't appreciate Resident Evil as much as I should have, so that makes me pretty late to the party with this. Now, what makes this interesting is because of that, this is going to be a partially blind playthrough, except I have a lot of background knowledge to share. And this is the best difficulty selection I've ever seen, like climbing a mountain, like going on a hike, like taking a walk. Uh, we're going to be playing like going on a hike, normal mode. And we get normal Chris and Roydy Magoo Chris from fucking RE5, his BSAA costume. Really weird seeing him juxtaposed next to RE1 Chris. Uh, if I remember right, and you also get a BSAA costume for Jill, uh, we're going to be playing as plain old vanilla Jill Valentine. There was some kind of contest to get the, uh, the BSAA alternate costumes in the game. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Found it yet? No, not yet, Brad. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare.
this way. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Wesker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp. Dining room. All right, we have control of Jill. Right off the bat, this looks amazing. I remember the original version of Resident Evil of uh, the dining room here was a lot brighter than this. This is, again, right off the bat, a lot moodier. I like it. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. Oh man! I never played Remake, but I heard that they rewrote a lot of the dialogue. It should have been, I hope this is not Chris's blood! And the voices are obviously new for Remake, and the sound is remastered in this version. But you lose some of the, the campy charm of the uh, the stiff voiceovers and the stilted lines. Uh, that's a minor complaint, though. This feels really good. That's locked. An emblem of armor is carved into the lock. Can't write it down from here. Whenever... With uh, fixed cameras like this, if you don't know what's ahead of you because of the camera angle, aim the gun. Because the auto-aim will turn you towards a monster if it's there, even if it's off-screen, so you can get an idea of what's ahead of you. So you don't have to walk into situations blind. Nothing there. Oh, I like this a lot. That is a Romero-ass zombie. Wait for it to get around the corner. Ah, uh, that's a little more durable. Didn't go down. I'm gonna try and reset it and run past him. Barry! What is it? Look out! It's a monster! Let me take care of it! What the hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. I did not expect that to happen. That's awesome. Thank you, Barry. Oh, shield? 
Will you take the emblem? Is that the emblem of armor from the, uh... Uh, you can examine items. Okay. Ooh, that new UI and the new menu... Pretty good. Uh, I'm not seeing anything special about it. It's galled all around the outer edges from frequent fitting. Okay, so that's gonna be used as a key item. I can't believe a remake from 2002 cleans up so well. When the two have run each other through, the path to your destiny will open. Okay. What the hell was that all about? Oh. Oh, and a typewriter. I didn't notice that when I picked the ink ribbon up earlier. It's gone. Blood stains on the floor. Hope these didn't come from your friends. All right, so I guess we're going back out into the main foyer to see uh, Wesker. I'm so happy that animation is still in this. Happiest I've ever been to see a loading screen. Wesker! Jill, help me look for him. But let's not leave this hall. Good idea. Oh, okay. Um... Right, better finish. <laughs> Looking for Wesker. Uh, he was serious when he said I can't leave the main hall. Can't go upstairs, though? There's not much to do in that main room, though, on the first floor. Okay, must be... Second blo no, I don't see him. Again, I, I can't believe how well this cleans up. Like the original was released in 96 on the PS1. Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris, and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room again. Okay, then. I'll try the door on the other side. This mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh! I almost forgot. It's a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. <laughs> that better not be it. Thanks. I may need it. Listen. If something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. Oh, those bastards! I'm a little bit more angry about that one, though. Might be handy if you, the master of unlocking things, take it with you. Damn it! Why would they get rid of that line? It's a classic. Ah, uh, so I guess we're going back into the dining room. Yo, oh, yeah, the, the Romero zombie that we saw earlier was uh, munching on... Was it Kenneth's corpse? So, there is a little bit more to explore out in this hallway. Oh, wait a minute. There's a zombie in this hallway. It's turning me around. You were not there before, um, but I know everything back there is locked, so we'll ignore him. He's holding on to something. It's a VHS tape? Okay. I need a VHS player to uh, play that, so not going to be watching that right now. That is a good ass shot. Wow. Oh my god, I can't believe how much I missed out on Resident Evil 1. I feel like that corpse is getting up. The hell happened to the mansion? Oh, by the way, the uh, zombie munching on Kenneth's corpse, uh if you've played the the Evil Within or watched my stream of it, the scene of that zombie eating uh, Connolly in the beginning of that game is a direct reference to the first zombie that shows up here in Resident Evil 1. And there's another element of the Evil Within that's a huge Resident Evil 1 callback that I'm not going to spoil yet. Even more fun facts about that. Ooh, the, the mirror setup here is pretty good. More herbs. Uh, more little fun facts about that for zombie that shows up. I said it looks uh, like a something out of the Night of the Living Dead. 
That is very much intentional. Um, Night of the Living Dead was the single biggest influence on Resident Evil. Uh, it was originally, RE was supposed to be a ghost game based on a story Mikami read. Death is only the beginning? Okay. Um, it, it's, it was supposed to be based on a ghost story that Mikami read as a kid, and it's the same story that inspired The Grudge and The Ring. And it was also supposed to be a spiritual successor to an old Capcom game called Sweet Home about a haunted mansion. This is a super big death trap. This is like an... This is comical. It's like an Indiana Jones trap. Death is everything. That's locked. An emblem of a helmet. So we have shield, armor... Uh, or, sorry, helmet, armor, sword. No shield emblem uh, lock so far. Will you take the mansion? No, no! I'm not gonna get killed for that. When I find out I need a mansion key, I'll come back here for that and figure this out later. I'm not getting killed for a mansion key like that. No. Uh, but yeah, when Mikami saw Night of the Living Dead, things changed directions quite drastically. And I might have told this story during RE3, but it bears repeating. Um, George Romero wrote a script for some of the RE2 commercials before that came out. And then they told him to write and direct the Resident Evil movies, so... Romero watched someone play through Resident Evil and then wrote a script for the first movie, and Capcom saw the script, and they fired him! Because they thought it was too different from the source material. And they hired Paul W.S. Anderson. And that is why we have a litany of shitty Resident Evil movies starring Anderson's wife, whose nipples he jealously guards. <laughs> uh, the story of that goes that uh, Mila Jovovich, uh, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson's wife, uh, they met on set for the first movie, and there's a scene in it, apparently, where you could see her nipples in the original version, and then when they finally got married, he edited them out of all future versions of the first Resident Evil movie. Okay, lead him around here. That camera angle perfectly shows off what appears to be a big key item. And I almost walked past... what is this, a dagger? Defensive items allow you to escape momentarily when grabbed. Not when you're grabbed from behind, though. Okay. And that's my survival knife, so I have the dagger equipped already. Oh, that's pretty cool. So if I get grabbed, then I'll break it automatically and I guess use the dagger up in the process? Uh. Oh, wait. I can push this. I don't know how I'm gonna grab that sapphire yet, but probably has something to do with pushing this. I'm thinking maybe I can push this off the balcony to the bottom. Oh, we're right above the dining room, I think. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think I can do anything with the statue right now, so we'll leave it right there. Where else can I go from here? Out here? And if I'm right, this should lead back out to, like, the second floor of... Or does it? I was gonna say the second floor of the main hall. Oh yeah, this is... this, uh, is what it is. Ooh! I spooked myself looking at my reflection. <laughs> I don't know if I missed out on the original Resident Evil. I definitely missed out on Remake, though. Holy shit, look at that. The alternative controls feel really good, too. Um, they feel better than even Silent Hill 2's alternate control type. I've never been a big fan of tank controls before. Uh, they can be pretty handy with fixed cameras like these, but all in all... I'll still opt out of tank controls when given the option. The only exception being Silent Hill 1. 
because the camera can be pretty crazy in Silent Hill 1. Okay, we're going to explore the mansion a little bit more. Like, right off the bat, this is way, way creepier than I remember Resident Evil ever being. That's, um, really why I didn't play that much Ari as a kid. Because I thought, ah, it's not scaring me, so what the hell's the point? I didn't come to appreciate how good Resident Evil was until way, way later on. And that's kind of why I uh, gravitated towards Silent Hill when I was a kid, because that game just shook me. This, though? Yeah, I'm feeling a little tingle down my spine out here. This is where I need to use the arrowhead I got earlier from the arrow. Man, I'm really happy that you put that little memo in about uh, examining items. I wouldn't have figured out to take the arrowhead off of the arrow without that. By the way, that is one of the best looking graveyards I think I've ever seen in a game. No exaggeration. A stone statue with a hole where the eye should be. The eye's nose and mouth should be. A hole where the nose should be. And a hole where the mouth should be. So Spencer's Mansion is a, a gigantic open area, which is pretty cool for a su uh, survival horror game. The Book of Curses, so we'll examine that, too. Anything? Oh, wait. That appears to be a key. Got the mansion key. Wasn't that the key that they tried to put me in a death trap over? The mansion key? Oh, you. Four masks. A mask that speaks no evil, smells no evil, sees no evil, sm uh, speaks smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. Okay, that's probably going to be our main objective, is to assemble all the masks in order to progress to a new area. We have a lot of locked doors, a lot of key items to find, a lot of puzzles to solve. And they're available... I mean, I'm, I'm guessing the layout, the, uh, the, the path through the mansion is probably fairly linear, given what's blocked off and what you need to progress in the order that you'll have to find that stuff in, but it's nice that you can get an, an idea of what's coming up early on. Like shotgun shells here, for the shotgun I haven't found yet. Man, this is solid, solid graveyard. Um, the, the amount of, of lighting tricks they can pull off uh, for this remastered PS4 version is really elevating this. So one thing that I, I am really keen to find right now is a map. That would help out more than probably anything else right now. Ooh, what's this? Wait, ah, god I have that option paralysis again, ah, okay, emblem of a helmet. There are a lot of directions to go. Wonder what's on the other side of the door. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jill takes it all in stride. Special Ops team investigating a cannibal instant in the Arkley Mountains here outside of Raccoon City. We have a pretty classic zombie horror plot. And we've gone and taken refuge inside this spooky ass mansion. And Jill is just like, eh, it's fine. Barry too. She just runs out like, hey, Barry, it's a monster. Eh. I'll take care of it, Jill. Okay, we have a key item up there. Oh, cool, I can use the mansion key here. I feel like I kind of recognize this place. Either way, I don't want to be here right now. Uh, because... If there's a way up to whatever is being held onto by that statue, I want it. Oh, I can push and pull this. Okay, can I... 
Wait, can I drop down to the other side? Yes, I can. I guess before I push that to the statue, see what's back here. It's nothing. Oh, wait. Oh, a dagger. Not bad. Various art supplies. Okay, back on to our main objective. What? Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can raise the gun, um, you can lower it, and you can leave it kind of, uh, flattened out. I think I... Oh, wait, I hear it getting back up. So it was, what, three shots to the body, one to the head? He's still alive? Pretty damn durable. Okay, well, it's about even. Should be able to grab whatever is up there. There's a map of the mansion! Yeah! First floor, the. That's our first map. Oh, and it tells you what rooms you have 100% in and what rooms are still in progress. That's really, really useful. And it tells you where the typewriters are. Goddamn. Okay, so I think that's gonna do it for now. Uh, next time we'll continue on. For now, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.